Hey there, welcome to Sound Basics Part 1. In this video, we're going to look a little bit at what sound actually is and think a little bit about uh, sound, how it moves through the air and how it reaches our ears. So let's start with this video from our friends at Science Kids. It doesn't matter what makes a sound though. All sounds are made the same way through vibrations. When something vibrates, it moves back and forth really fast. So fast, in fact, that our eyes often can't see it moving. But other parts of our body can sense vibrations, and I bet you know what parts those are. That's right, our ears. So how does sound get from, say, a bell to our ears? The air all around us is made of tiny particles, and these particles are what carry sound. We can use marbles to demonstrate the teeny tiny particles that make up the air. Let's see how. If we put a few marbles together so they're touching, then roll another marble so that it crashes into them, the group of marbles will move. That's kind of what happens with sound. When we ring a bell, we cause the metal that makes up the bell to vibrate really fast back and forth. And the vibration of the bell also shakes up the particles that make up the air around it and makes them vibrate. Then those particles run into the air particles next to them and so on. You can also think about it like dominoes, with the vibration getting passed along from one bunch of particles in the air to the next. We call this path of vibration a wave. Right, so basically sound is vibration essentially. Um, and these vibrations can move from one place to another place. So for example, from this bell, can move through the air and pretty much stay intact and then reach our eardrums where the vibrations are translated then for our brain. Now, if you wanted to be a little philosophical about it, uh, you know, sound actually is just a kind of a system of encoding, really. It's just a, a series of vibrations that have certain properties and such. And then our brain has evolved in such a way that it'll translate those properties to, you know, a Beethoven symphony or the, you know, the truck outside or the sound of your voice. So it's pretty, it's pretty magical, actually. It's pretty amazing. Um, so let's have a little closer look at what uh, wave phenomenon R sound is a sound moves through the air in, in a wave phenomenon, um, just like light and other things. So a wave can be described as a disturbance that travels through a medium, transporting energy from one location to another location. This medium is simply the material through which the disturbance is moving, and it can be thought of as a series of interacting particles, right? So here's some interesting animations that show us this a little bit better. So essentially, Sound moves through air, the vibration, say, of a violin or a flute or uh, a, a person's voice uh, will cause excitation in the air in, in the form of a wave. And the wave moves through the particles, the molecules of air. And basically, the molecules are being compressed or are open up in a, in a term we call rarefaction. They're either going through compression or rarefaction. They clump together or they spread out. And... Uh, you can you notice the wave energy moves through air like that, but the actual molecules themselves aren't moving with the wave. They're just kind of being jostled back and forth. But the energy is actually compressing these molecules and spreading them out. So in a longitudinal wave, the particle displacement is parallel to the direction of wave propagation. So uh, sound waves are, are longitudinal waves. They move parallel like this through the air. A wave travels through a medium, but does not move the particles from one place to another. So, right, so we're not actually transporting this molecule with our wave all the way to this other side over here, uh, where basically just the molecules are just being smushed up and uh, spread out. So the molecules are just sort of helping the energy move through from one place to another, but aren't the actual uh, sound wave itself. The next video I'm going to show you just shows actually airflow, but it kind of gives you an idea of, this. these animations are interesting right here, but it kind of gives you a, a, a more of a sense of the fluidity of air molecules, of how you can just very fluidly move air about and how it responds very quickly. So um, let's have a look at that video and you can understand how uh, sound waves can be fairly complex and they can move through air very fluidly. So you see this great animation from the folks at NVIDIA showing how the air kind of flows around a car. And essentially, and it gives a kind of sense of the 3D nature of it. And essentially, sound is a lot like that. It's, this, it's these kind of piles of air molecules flowing about in this very 3D kind of way. Great. 
Um, so the next few videos are just visualizations of sound themselves. It gives give you a real grasp of uh, actually how, how these waves are traveling through air. Um, the first one comes from NPR, and it's this pretty amazing technique they used to in a high-speed camera to actually show you actual sound waves. I'm going to show you the sound of a clap. And I don't mean some digital depiction of a clap. I mean that when this man's hands come together, you're going to see something that is normally invisible. You're going to see the actual sound wave leaving his hands and traveling outward at 761 miles per hour, the speed of sound. And here it is again. Here's a book landing on a table. The end of a towel being snapped. A firecracker. An AK-47. And of course, a clap. Right, yeah, so you can see there um, sound actually being moved through the air. I particularly like the firecracker right there. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. The next one I want to show you comes from this field uh, called cymatics. And uh, a couple different videos are mixed up in this one, and they'll explain kind of semantics as a way of visualizing uh, sound energy. This basically led me to a subject called cymatics. Now, cymatics is the process of visualizing sound by basically vibrating a medium such as sand or water, as you can see there. We can also use cymatics as a beautiful natural art form. This image here is created from a snippet of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony playing through a cymatic device. So it kind of flips things on its head a little bit. And this is Pink Floyd's machine um, playing in real time through the cymatic. Right, so he's using a number of sound visualization devices, notably these, this uh, known as a Claudini plate. Uh, basically, uh, plates have a certain kind of resonance, which modes of resonance, which we'll get into later. And you know, there's areas of uh, where the plate doesn't move, and there's areas where the plate does move, and then it creates these very, very interesting patterns. All right, so I'm going to wrap this this section up with a kind of a summary video that also kind of points to the next. Uh, section next part, uh, basically on the transmission of sound. So let's have a look at that. Transmission of sound. Every sound is produced by a vibration. 
Vibration is the back and forth movement of an object. As you speak, vibrations are produced by the vocal cords in the throat. You can hear only when the sound energy reaches your ears. But how does sound energy travel? Wonder how that works? Come, let's go across to Dr. Zook. Sound energy travels in the form of sound waves. There are mainly two types of waves, transverse wave and longitudinal wave. Let us see how waves travel. This is a longitudinal wave. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. These waves travel at different speeds in different mediums. The medium could be a solid, liquid or gas. Now let's see how this works. In a solid, the particles are very close together. Sound energy moves as one particle hits the other particle. With the particles being so close together, sound travels quickest through a solid. If we look at particles in a liquid, they appear to be slightly further apart when compared to solid. Thus, sound energy takes a little longer to travel through a liquid. Look at the particles of gas. They are spread out, and hence, sound waves travel most slowly through them. Now we know how sound travels in different media. The vibration of particles produces waves. Wavelength is the distance between two consecutive compressions or rarefactions. The number of waves passing through a point in a second is called frequency, and it is measured in hertz. Sound waves travel in all directions. Emily? Sound gets reflected, that is, it bounces back on hitting a solid surface. Bouncing back of sound is called echo. Bouncing back of sound is purposefully used in detecting depth of seabeds. That's amazing, isn't it? Summary. Every sound is produced by a vibration. Vibrations are produced by our vocal cords when we speak. There are two types of waves, transverse wave and longitudinal wave. In a transverse wave, the particles vibrate at a right angle to the direction of the wave. In a longitudinal wave, vibrations are parallel to the direction of the wave. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. Sound travels quickest through a solid. Wavelength is the distance between two consecutive compressions or rarefactions. The number of waves passing through a point in a second is called frequency, and it is measured in hertz. Bouncing back of sound is called echo. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. Um, this also kind of points to part two, talking about frequency and um, wavelength and such, which we'll discuss in part two of this video. So yeah, basically, um, you know, in a nutshell, this is kind of what sound is. It's these, it's these vibrations, essentially. And that's all really sound is, is a series of vibrations. And the way it propagates through the air is kind of interesting. It moves these molecules in this wave, in this um, wave formation, and then it reaches our ears. So join us for next the next section where we talk a little bit more about uh, the properties of a sound wave.